it'll just get worse. So in that situation, you need a credible threat. You need something which is going to focus their minds uh, on the need to change. And one would be the evolution of private currencies created by entrepreneurs and backed, of course, not by uh, state fear, but by some other other means to, to give people capacity to trust the currency for conversion for, for sale purposes. Uh, we need something like that. And frankly, entrepreneurs learn faster than, business, than economists do. I've seen uh, entrepreneurs go through this experience, have a be hit by the financial crisis, see their fortunes wiped out, think what the hell hit me, where did that come from? Uh, see an economist saying it's an exogenous shock and say you've got to be kidding, it's something inside the system, learn about the system and then realise how it functions. Think, hey, not only is this what wiped me out, this is a potential uh, commercial opportunity because there are many, many people who would like to make uh, business transactions right now who can't make the transactions simply because of the shortage of credit-based money or government-based money, let's create a private-based money instead. So in that sense, I have, I've always had great respect for entrepreneurs. It's made me very different to a lot of critics of capitalism who you know, normally uh, deride everybody in the system. I, I have a lot of time for people who innovate, and, and that's here, yet again, that innovation at the level of the financial sector is now necessary, and it's far more likely to come from commercial sector entrepreneurs than it is from the finance sector, and certainly from governments and, uh, and economists. Now, a hundred years ago, the in thing was gold-backed currencies. That's what most of the world used. And ever since the 1970s, we've moved to fiat currency, where, and actually the proponents of fiat currency would say its principal feature is that the government gets to just decide what the size of the money supply should be, or increase it or decrease it at the push of a button, without having to have any gold backing behind it. So when you talk about moving away from the current system to something new and better, what kind of currency system should we have? Should it be another fiat system that's run by someone other than the government, or should it be gold backed, or should it be backed by some other kind of asset? What are we talking about in terms of the nature of the currency itself? Well, look, still, I still think the best system is one which is a combination of fiat and credit-based money. Uh, but we, we're aware of the, of the failings of both those systems and the failing of the, the fundamental. When you have a mixed system like we have right now, uh, the government might not create enough money and might, might make the wrong, wrong decisions that they've, they've been doing ever since Wachler. And the, 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 the credit banks, money-creating banks, might create credit for the purposes of speculation rather than production. And even beyond that, you have an inherent tendency, as Minsky argued, for capitalism to generate too much debt and have a debt crisis, even if the money's all been used for productive purposes. So there's all those sorts of limitations, but if you're aware of them, it is a system which is very flexible. If we can get the money to entrepreneurs and to, and to, and to firms for working capital as our first priority, that, then it works very, very well. And the elasticity of that, that money system is, is partly where capitalism's capacity to innovate occurred compared to the... Uh, you know, the stodgy behaviour of the Soviets, for example, back in the, in the days when we had central planned economies as well. So that's still, I'd say, is a preferable system. But if you have this type of intellectual paralysis now that, that, that features with both central banks and private banks, then you need an independent group to come forward. And private entrepreneurs can create money systems based on, for example, one of the systems I know called Barter Card, which is based in Australia, uh, is people to join you have to be a tradesman. And as a tradesman, you can be paid to work for another person who's part of the whole system, therefore another tradesman, in what they call trade dollars, which are basically valued ten, dollar for dollar Australian currency dollars to these currency dollars. But they, they're valued in terms of your labor at one hour per uh, $10 per hour of labor. So in that situation, tradesmen who would like to, for example, uh, get their house plastered can go and say, I'll be an electrician, I'll work on your electrical projects that paid half in dollars and half in trade dollars. And then that's built up a credit that you can then send to this person and say, I want you to come do plastering in my house at 10, 10 trade dollars an hour. And that has enabled quite a substantial amount of commerce to occur, particularly in, this, in, the, in the Australian state of Victoria where it began. So systems like that are backed effectively by the labor of the members. The system that you've just described 
works for people who are tradesmen and are, are sharing skills, but the rest of the economy obviously can't participate in something that's that focused. So when you talk about entrepreneurs generally offering currency systems on a competitive basis, what would it look like? How would this work? What are the mechanics? Are these things backed by something? If so, how, how would they be redeemed and so forth? Uh, that's, it has to be backed by something that people trust uh, to some degree in the same sense we can't really trust banks. But of course, if you if you got a check deposited in your account by um, uh, Barclays Bank, for example, you wouldn't tear it up. Okay? You think that that is now your uh, that you, you just accept the bank's crediting of your account as a form of money, and that's because you trust that the bank has the backing to enable this to happen. And it's only when we lose trust in a bank that runs on banks actually occur. Now you therefore have to find something else that people trust, and that's why gold always comes forward as something people think they trust the value of gold. So a gold-backed currency is one particular way that this could be achieved. But the, that is not what uh, I, I, the people are putting forward in, uh, in these various parallel currencies that I know about. So one, of, of course, the, the backing I've just explained is based on the labour of the members. Another one that I know which is called IEX. It's about to start, in, I think, in the 1st of July. It's being launched in about 30 or so countries around the world. And that is based on the wealth of, uh, of, of high net worth individuals who have assets they want to sell. And what the, the system does is say, I'm going to get a valuation. By the way, I better say I'm being, I'm being consulting to this firm, being paid by them, so I have to state up, up front, but I'm doing it because I think we need something and I think this is a potentially successful avenue. But back to the explanation, uh, you, if to become a member, you have to have at least $1 million worth of assets. The assets get valued by an auditing firm. Of course, they're verified at current price levels, then you get a certificate, which you can then use to buy assets owned by any, any other person in this whole network. So effectively, it's backed by the wealth, not the labor of the individuals it is with the barter card, but it's backed by the wealth of the individuals in this system. And then that's to enable you know, people to sell a yacht. They can't get, there's not enough monetary demand for a yacht, but they can find IEX certificates for it. A, a hotel chain could use that as a way of uh, they could value the notional value of the rooms that currently aren't being used and produce, get an IEX uh, certificate backing that, which would then enable them to uh, make a sale to a, a retail chain. Uh, and the retail chain, you know, again, it's a parallel form of exchange. Uh, so this is another clever way to say, what can we use as a way of backing a currency that people will trust to enable an exchange to occur?